final season of 2021. We were in the Championship. We're much stronger now than we ever have been in relation to the other teams in the division. And I think it's about time for us to get promoted. Welcome back. Episode 45 of the wonderful Capri Heroes. We have our first game of the season against Stoke, so it's relatively local. It's a home game. It's the first game in our new stadium. We've spent a bit of money, not vast amounts. We've still got a bit in the uh, kitty that you can see. We are roughly 6th or 7th in regards to the uh, season preview. We've had a decent pre-season. I think we're in we're in with a really good shout this year. Before we run through everything though, if you could do me the favour of liking, subscribing, showing your support on the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. What shall we start off with? We'll go off with the fixtures, because there's been three of them, because I couldn't be bothered to change any others. Uh, again, I've had an offer accepted for Casa Reca, uh, 5 million this time, and he, he, he didn't go again. Another one at 4.5 million just before that, again he didn't go. So I'm not I'm not moaning, but he just he's the most loyal player I think I've ever had. He just he just he's not interested in leaving. I'm all over it. We went for our preseason tour in Dub uh, Ireland and we played UCD and that is it. <laughs> we then came back, played our parent clubs. Uh, was it Man City? He's it listed as Man City, but it was their under twenty threes. Realistically, if we look at the squad, um, and then we'll hop over to there. Well, then again, they did have Musiala up front, who is insane. But it was their under-23s, or a weakened squad. Beat them 3-1. And our final friendly was a 2-0 win against Crawley, with the goals coming from Marius Cott and Clive Pollock. In regards to the division, we are the ninth best team, uh, on equal standing with Stoke, Sunderland and Huddersfield at the start. Uh, hopefully, we've got a little bit left in the transfer window, so we can improve that standing as well. We do eventually have a player in the Dream Eleven in Jeremy Messam. We did try to bring in Steve Cookney. Uh, he spent a year with us uh, a few years back. Had a really good season, but just has refused to come back to us, which is good of him. But yeah, a bit frustrated about that. So we would have had two players in there, or at least on loan. But no, it's fine. It's fine. All the promoted teams in Ipswich, Bristol and Wickham are expected... Uh, well, they're lower than ourselves. Bristol and Wickham are almost expected to go down. Uh, and then the relegated teams of Watford, Swansea and Norwich are all expected to go back up. They are the strongest in the division. And add to that the fact that Brighton and Palace are still in. It's a little bit mean. So we lost 8-4, which we're more than aware of. Uh, and Borough beat Blackburn. Uh, and as we know, Brighton are still in the division. So we'll find out that Borough won 2-0 at Wembley. Don't care. Still salty. I'm not going to not be salty about that. Just a heads up. We did a few bits of business at the end of last season. Uh, one being Alex O'Brien leaving us. Um, he came in for 180k a few seasons back. We've just sold him for 130. Small loss. Doesn't really matter. It's negligible. Perfectly fine. Um, we've brought in Clive Pollock, who I mentioned earlier. He is a left mid, left wing back. I'm trying to train him to be a left back, to be quite honest, because I think he'll be really helpful. So if we look at that, it'll be the same stats. So I want him to be that left wing back. Attacking. Do a nice little job for us down that left side. Uh, then we have the player who, I've got to be honest, he's good. But I signed him mostly for his name, which is Robbie Decock. It's just brilliant. He's a left mid. Can play the inverted winger as well. Um, so he'll be challenging Pollock and uh, Davy Llewellyn on that left hand side. In preparation for Colton leaving us, which a little cheeky spoiler, he hasn't done so yet, I brought in Andrew Steele from Cholton for 300 to 375k. He's not as good as him, but he's happy to come in as a backup. His wages aren't extortionate, so if he does come in and do a job, that's brilliant. If I sell Colton and we bring in a better goalie, he's happy to sit in the background. I just thought it made sense to bring him in. Colton still is quite clearly our best player. Well, best goalkeeper. I think he's our best actual player, to be fair. And we've brought in three other players. 
Uh, I'm not going to run you through the release players because there wasn't really anyone. Uh, the only one being Norman Gwynn. We brought him in on a free transfer after his loan, thinking that he might do something. He didn't, and all we've done is pay his loan, for his uh, wages for a few years, so it's not really a big loss. Uh, we've brought in another player from Man City called Kade Miley. Miley? Not a clue. He's pretty handy. He's going to be playing that uh, deep line playmaker role, to be honest. I'm not sure why they've got him listed as a box to box because he's quite clearly stronger in this position. So he's going to be our playmaker. Um, probably going to be looking at dropping Peak back towards the defence because he did that role very well for us a few years back. Alongside him, we've also brought in Hubert Szyplinski. Plausible. Might be the way you pronounce it. Uh, he also will be kind of in that role. And I'm paying 1.1k between these two players, 1.1 grand a month, a month, a week. I'm pretty happy about that, to be honest. melee has got him absolutely dead to rights, stats wise. But it'd be a nice little rotation between the two there. And we've also brought in from Oxford, Aaron Moore, another centre back. Pretty decent, six foot three, good little bit of height to him. He's cost us, uh, I've lost it now, 250 to 300k. We have now a new stadium as well. The pitch, why am I going to pitch dimensions is the first thing to point out. It's based in Salihull, which I'm not 100% sure why, because Cadbury's based in Bourneville, but whatever. Uh, 17,500 seat stadium, pretty chunky. Cadbury Athletic Stadium, it's called. It has good corporate facilities as well, which is good, so we'll probably see that um, taking a jump in the uh, next season review. And then we're never going to play on it again, which is incredibly annoying, but it is what it is. To kick off the final season, our lineup is going to be Colton, Tufton, McBride, Moore, and Norris across the back four. Uh, I know Moore is highlighted in red, but when we start the game, it will register him up. We have Kasareka and Pollock outside of Miley and Boadu. And then Messam is playing the supporting role at the moment to Bacon. So he is actually really strong at the moment. Um, his stats are geared more towards kind of an inverted winger, but we don't play that role. And we don't want to drop him all the way back. And he's stronger definitely as a striker-wise. As a striker-wise? That's not a sentence. <laughs> in relation to being a striker, he's stronger as an advanced forward than he is deep lying as well. And Messam can play that deep line role very strong. So let me just show you his stats highlighted. So the only thing he's missing is strength. And he's five foot six, but I'm sure he'll get over it. We have brought Pissant back. We're paying him a bit less than we did the previous year. So he's down to 5.75 per week. Um, he was really influential and an important player of our team last year, so I thought it made sense to bring him back, especially if we're paying a bit less than we did. Along with that, we've brought Stephen Peake back. Obviously, he's kind of become a staple of our team. He's been the captain for the last three or four years, and he's not even my player. But we lost him on a free, and he's sixth year back on loan with us now. They keep sending him to us, and the best thing is, they're offering, <laughs> they're asking for almost nothing. £875 a week. I'll pay that. Every day. Don't you worry about it. Uh, along with that, we have Kaplinski that we mentioned earlier. Miley and Messam making up our five low-knee players. We could probably bring more in, but it would mean that we'd have to rotate, which I'm not a fan on. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I think we've got quite a strong team. Tufton has recently had his first cap for Canada. So he's a good right back. Uh, he's geared definitely more towards the defensive side of it. But we're just going to force him and just make him play attacking. And see what he can do. Our first 15 minutes of the season have been absolutely riveting. I've seen literally nothing. Except the time flying down. We're just pushing up to uh, half hour. We're definitely having the better of the game with the uh, shots. Being that Stoke have only just had their first. But um, yeah, there's no goals. Nothing's happened. It's nearly half time. I'm going to shout at them. Just give them a poke. See if they want to do anything. I was only going to do one, uh, <laughs> one game this episode. But... Might have to squeeze the second one in if it's going to be this uneventful. Have we all noticed how big the stadium is? Little purple seats. It's just, ah, it's beautiful. Love to see it. Toth has a ball. Steven Sessegnon, he's still knocking about apparently. Gabby, good ball forward, but he looked offside to me. Maybe he wasn't. Oh no, Linus just put his flag up. Took his time. Half time's been and gone. We've got a throw in for ourselves. We're now attacking the left hand. Messam, Norris, Moore. Two pretty tall centre backs now as well. Six foot four and six foot three. So if we do drop Pete back into. Oh, Bacon's got the first goal of the season for us. Love to see it. 
Maybe, maybe that was it. I think Bacon's about 6-1 as well, so a pretty physical team. But uh, we're playing playing nice football as well with it, so it's the main thing. I say we're a physical team. Our other forwards, 5 foot 6. So Bristol Rovers are currently top of the league. Sessegnon put his throw into Toth towards the back post, and they've immediately equalised. Okay, it's five minutes later, but still, it's the next highlight. That's, that's immediate enough for me. As a throw in for ourselves, Tufton puts it to Bacon. Casareka, all the way up to the left hand side towards Pollock. I forgot his name already. Pollock. Norris puts it into Pollock again. Oh, and it's a penalty. Who's taking it? Messon. He scored 28 last season for us, if I remember rightly. So if we can do the same again, that'll be helpful. And that's a pretty handy start for him. It's 2 1 to the mighty Cabri. As a throw in for Stoke, really deep for them on the left. Panzo puts it to Ire. I assume it's Ere, how it's pronounced, I don't know. Moore's got the uh, loose header, puts it back to his goalie. We have had a few offers for Colton. Um, Birmingham have came in for him a few times, Wolves and another team that I can't remember. Um, I've got his asking price at like 15 million and I ask for that and they say no and then they just move on. Colton's fine with it, so I'm just going to carry on. I'm not, I don't really want to sell him, I'm not going to sell him unless I have to. But if we can get a decent price for him, obviously, we're going to be pretty happy. But, in the meantime, let's make some subs. So Boadu's not playing particularly well at the moment, so I'm going to move Melee over to the box-to-box, -box, and I'm putting Azeri back on. We have Pollock, he's doing alright on his first game, but we'll take him out for Calva. But Norris is doing fantastically at left-back as well, he obviously knows that we've uh, we've signed Pollock to replace him, and he's, he's kicking right off, he is. But we're running into the last 10 minutes of the game now. Looks like we're in a relatively good position. We just need to kind of hold on to this result. Casareka's got a corner for us late into the game on the left hand. He's going to put it towards... Oh, he's just played it on the fleet. On, on the fleet? On the floor. Oh, God, what's happening? <laughs> it's away. So Tufton's going to pick this up. He's going to get a ball in with his six crossing. Surprisingly, it didn't find anyone. Ozeri. He's got it to Miley. Miley. I don't know how I'm going to pronounce that. I'm just going to say it's Miley. Just move on. 92nd minute, there's two left, and we've got a highlight. I'm not particularly happy about this, because I have a feeling I know where it's going to go. But Moran's got the ball for Stoke, or Moran. He's gone straight past the right back, and just he's just passed it back to Colton, which is good of him. Surely we've got to see the whistle go now. And that's the end. Beautiful. It is 2-1 for our first game of the season. That, uh, that penalty's done a lot to inflate our uh, XG, but even then I think we definitely had the uh, measure of Stoke this game. And our nice little stadium. Ah, oh, look at it. We can't really see it, because it's crap in the way. But it's a nice big old stadium. So I thought, seeing as over at our new stadium, I'll see if the fans mention anything about the ground. Not one mention. There's a few about Pollock and his debut. Unbelievable result, let's build some momentum. Uh, and don't really see why people are getting excited about that performance. Again, about Pollock. And they're just saying Pollock makes his debut, but I'm pretty sure there's about seven players making debuts in that game. So we're, um, we, I don't know, we did good. We'll carry on. And uh, what we'll do is jump onto the season review thing again, or season preview, and we'll see where we are lining up uh, with the rest of the teams regarding wages again. I'm interested to see that. We are no longer lowest wage in the league. We're 22nd, admittedly. And Bristol Rovers and Wickham are, <laughs> are below us. Ipswich have just came up, have gone straight ahead, um, and they're lining in with kind of the low end of the league. We're about what, 1.5 million off, 1.4 million off them. So we're, we're not a million miles off like we were. However, we are about a ninth, or just over a ninth of what Watford are spending on their wages. So we're quite a way off them, but what we're going to do is beat them in the league. So just, just don't worry about it. I am awfully worried. About all this money that's uh, floating about. I know this is definitely not what I'm here for. But this is like four years in the past. Watford brought in £290 million. Pounds. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is anyone letting that happen? It's Watford. Uh, this season they've spent 33 bought in 31 So, just silliness. I'm not going to look through the others. It's going to upset me even further. Just to test ourselves, for the next episode, we'll be back. At the end of the transfer window, if it's been busy, I'll probably do one game. If it's been relatively straightforward again, um, we'll do both. 
but I'm lining up at the moment Palace and Swansea. Uh, obviously, it's dependent on how we go with the FA Cup. Uh, sorry, the Carabao Cup, because I think that lines in about here on round three. But we'll find out when we'll we be back in the next episode. But I'm going to try and look and play in the hard teams because we want to get promoted and they're the ones that we're going to have to beat or at least take something from. And I hope you'll be back for that episode. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode as well. If you do me the favour of liking, subscribing, clicking on the items on screen as well. I thank you very much for your time. <laughs>